It is my great pleasure to speak with you from California. It's um, uh, almost uh, the start of the day here for us. And uh, I, uh, I'm going to I am going to uh, begin by briefly mentioning a project that I have completed. Uh, I have worked on a book with Corio Mura for uh, almost 25 years, and this book was published last year. So if you enjoy some of the topics I discussed today, uh, I invite you to uh, go and look in the book where you will find a much wider range of structures that we talk about. Um, but today, uh, my focus is my current project. And my current project is space solar power. And I've been working in this area now for about 10 years. And uh, I've had the pleasure of working with two colleagues at Caltech, Harry Atwater and Ali Hajimiri. And you can see us standing together at the bottom of this uh, slide, uh, having fun. And our collaboration has been um, uh, enormously exciting from a scientific uh, point of view. Um, also, uh, we have been lucky to receive um, for, for a structural engineer um, uh, a, an unusually large um, um, uh, availability of funds. Uh, and I thank our sponsors, which are Northrop Grumman, and more recently, uh, a philanthropist called Donald Bren has actually announced that he has provided for our research uh, a sum in the range of $100 million. So uh, with these funds, we have, been doing, we have been able to do some very exciting work, and I'll be presenting some of that today, uh, focusing, of course, on uh, lightweight structures. But I want to begin uh, my discussion of solar arrays uh, with a classic uh, structure, which is the solar array for the International Space Station. As you can see in the uh, center uh, photo, um, the, the space station has eight solar array wings. And if you look to the right, the top right, you will see that each wing is actually made of a uh, two deployable blankets covered with photovoltaic cells, which are deployed by a central deployment, deployable mast. And the size of these blankets, the length is 25 meters, the width is three meters. So these are the structures that we're talking about for reference. Uh, the efficiency of these photovoltaic cells is actually rather low by today's standards. It is 14%. And, uh, uh, at the bottom of the slide, you see a photo of just one of the wings during testing on the ground, hanging from a vertical um, support uh, structure. Um, talking about how things have changed uh, since the time the, um, the original arrays for the um, space station were designed and built, uh, you can see at the very bottom, uh, you can see a chart um, showing the efficiency of the cells that are currently available. Now, this is the research end of solar cells. And uh, um, the first thing to notice is that efficiency uh, of 30% is now routine. And in the research cells area, it is possible to exceed 50%. Now, one of the very significant and interesting developments in this area is that recently some photovoltaic materials have been developed, which are radiation hard. So radiation hard means that uh, from a structural engineer point of view, it means that these cells do not need to be covered with glass for radiation protection, but can be used as thin films covered um, laminated uh, in a very, very, very thin um, film uh, uh, form factor. And uh, uh, these materials are currently being advanced uh, in terms of uh, uh, chemical composition. And also, they are interesting because from a point of view of manufacturing, they can be built at a much lower cost than the original 
um, PV cells that you see, uh, for example, in the uh, photo uh, on the right. Now, uh, another interesting development is that of flexible blankets. And in fact, you actually see that in this photo that I have included. Now, this photo is showing, so to speak, more traditional PV cells. But uh, if you look carefully, you will see that instead of me being mounted on a continuous uh, sheet of material, the cells are actually mounted on a fabric. And uh, this is the direction that has been developed in recent years, allowing uh, the design of structures for um, solar arrays that are uh, rather different to the ones that we saw in the uh, original arrays for the International Space Station. So there was an experiment uh, done a few years ago uh, in space uh, on the rollout solar array or ROSA. Now, the blanket is at the center and is of the type I've described previously, but the two booms that you see on either side are composite deployable booms in this case. Now, subsequently to that in-space deployment, the, um, the same arrays have been used as a replacement or as additional uh, solar arrays on the International Space Station. They've actually been installed this year. Uh, and you can see uh, at the bottom of the slide, you can see the structure folded with the, uh, the blankets um, looped over a cylinder, actually two cylinders. And on the right, uh, you see the partial deployment of these blankets on the International Space Station with the original arrays in the background. And uh, there is, just for, uh, just for fun, I am showing the, uh, the Cygnus supply vehicle to the International Space Station on the right. And here what you see is that these arrays, which are made by a different company, it's an array called an Ultraflex array, uh, uh, deploys into uh, approximately a circular configuration. Now, um, regardless of uh, any, uh, regardless of uh, the state of the art that I have described, there are plans for uh, much larger solar arrays. And uh, two examples of the applications that are being proposed are shown in this slide. One is the Space Solar Power uh, Project at Caltech, which envisages structures of size 60 meter by 60 meter uh, flying in a, in a constellation uh, and forming a giant uh, uh, space station. Uh, to the right, uh, there is an image of an asteroid re redirection mission where very large solar arrays, again, provide the electric power to drive the electric thrusters for this um, satellite that grabs an asteroid and moves it away from the Earth. So these are just two uh, possible uh, applications. There are many others. And um, thinking about uh, the structures that we would like to realize, uh, the alternative concepts that we want to consider for um, uh, these large solar arrays, I like to uh, use the um, I'd like to use the example of solar sails. Now, uh, I'm showing here uh, the NIA Scout, which is a solar sail that will be launched this year. And uh, um, let me see if I can play the movie. Yeah, so you will see uh, the NIA Scout being deployed on a low friction table. And uh, so now a, a solar sail is a, a reflective film. So a reflective film can, of course, be made much thinner than the photovoltaic films that um, I have described previously. Uh, but the target aerial density of these solar uh, cells is on the order of 20 grams per meter squared, which can be contrasted to the two solutions I showed previously, the state of the art, the ROSA and Ultraflex, which weigh about two kilograms per meter squared, which are also limited in size as I have previously discussed. Now, 
in our work at Caltech and also at work in collaboration with JPL, we are trying to lower the aerial density from the current to uh, kilogram per meter squared to order of 300 and hopefully 100 grams per meter squared. And this is the background of the films that we are hoping to uh, build into our structures. So now I would like to focus on the structure itself. And I want to talk about an architecture for a giant solar array. And this architecture is going to be scalable. So it's a bending structural architecture. Uh, the main element is the strip. And you see several parallel strips in a quadrant of the structure. Uh, they are attached at the ends to cords. And these cords we assume to be inextensional. And the cords are suspended between the central bus and the tip of diagonal booms, which are deployable, similarly to the deployable booms you have seen previously uh, in this presentation. So the loading is applied by the solar pressure or by uh, inertial forces, which are due to maneuvers of the spacecraft. And this is the basic concept that we are trying to execute. And now, just to provide a little more detail about this concept, I want to talk about the strips. And I, uh, I have shown pictures of three strips in the bottom photo. And uh, these strips are made in the way you see uh, in the image on the top right. They consist of two flanges attached to a web. The flanges are curved and they can be flattened and rolled in the way shown in the diagram. They are made of a hybrid laminate of carbon and glass fiber. And when these uh, structures, which we call longerons, are folded, they are about 25 millimeter wide. Now, also interesting, uh, they're actually, the flanges are thinner than the computer printer paper. The, the thickness of these flanges is 80 micron. And so, as you would imagine, they are very lightweight and very delicate, but they are also stiff and strong structures if one knows how to handle them and how to design them, which is what we have been studying with my students. So, um, once you have this structural concept uh, for the deployed structure, uh, a key question is how it's going to be packaged. And to package the structure, uh, we did a series of kinematic studies. And uh, uh, here you see a top view of a small model that I'll be talking about now. So there are uh, strips uh, that are arranged in three concentric squares. And I'll focus initially on one square only. So imagine now uh, uh, um, putting elastic folds in these very thin longerons that I discussed and uh, uh, study the behavior of the structure as it folds as we put folds in a symmetric way and we activate the, um, the folding also in a symmetric way. So the, the, on the right uh, in this um, uh, set of images, I have shown a simple diagram where we imagine the uh, square and the four strips to be divided into rigid bodies. And these rigid bodies are connected by joints that have two degrees of freedom. One is a bending degree of freedom for each one of the hinges, and one is a torsional degree of freedom. Now, there are 24 degrees of freedom in total for the structure, but if we assume symmetry uh, for, um, uh, the, uh, for the motion of the structure, fourfold symmetry, then there will be only three degrees of freedom. And in fact, um, remaining, and uh, we can actually study the folding in by doing simple kinematic simulations for one square, as you see here. And this is the folding of just one of the four squares. And then we can synchronize the motion of the three sets of squares uh, such that they uh, deploy in a synchronized way. And so what you see is the motion of the outer square first, while the inner square is not moving yet. And now we are folding the inner square 
while the outer structure is collapsing around it. So this is the concept for packaging. And uh, uh, if you think uh, now back about the whole structure, then uh, the idea is to do the following. So um, we take the whole structure and we use the kinematic approach I have described to arrive at a star shape. We call it a star shape. It's a structure with four flat arms and a center. So that is the star. And once we have the star shape, we coil the star in the way shown in the lower part of the sequence. Okay, so there is going to be coiling in addition to localized folding. And if we are going to be the, doing coiling of thin shells, then we need to think about how we will stabilize the coil. So now here, there are three concepts for coiling a, uh, a thin shell. Uh, one, we apply radial forces to hold it uh, tightly coiled. Uh, the second one is that we apply a tension uh, at the tip of the structure so that the coiled assembly is again tightly packaged. And then there is a third scheme, which is the one we have chosen, where we use pressure. So the difference between tension and pressure schemes is that the pressure is actually applied by an additional membrane that is looped over the structure itself. And this is actually easier to implement in practice. So in our deployment mechanism that we will be making use of, there is, in addition to the structure that you saw previously, there are four membranes which are looped over the, uh, the coiled parts of the structure and that provide a confining pressure. And uh, on the right, you see a schematic diagram of the mechanism itself, consisting of a series of cylinders and rollers. And these rollers and the cylinders are all driven by electric motors so that we can maintain a, uh, a constant tension in the membranes, and that constant tension constrains the membrane by applying the pressure. So now I'm going to show you uh, the deployment of the whole thing. So in this deployment, you're going to see the uncoiling. The structure comes out of the mechanism, and you're, you have three views of the uh, deployment. There is a kind of side view, there is a bottom view, and there is a top view. So the uncoiling, the structure is just emerging from the mechanism in a very benign way, as you can see. And now we're going to release. And here it is. We've done uh, the dynamic deployment, as you've seen, quite quickly. We now slow it down and watch the motion of the structure as it unfolds. So it's a complex motion, but it is also a highly repeatable motion. So um, in order to have confidence in this process and to understand aspects of it, we do a finite element simulation of the deployment, where every uh, basically uh, the structure is discretized into thin shell elements of about two millimeter in size. It's a huge finite element model, even though we're only simulating a quarter of the structure, assuming symmetry. It takes actually four days to run the simulation that I have shown you in Abacus Explicit on a server with about 12 cores. And uh, uh, so now here, I will show you the res results of a simulation. And uh, on the right, we have a comparison to the experiment that I showed previously. And uh, um, yeah, the experiment is somewhat a little bit slower, but the motion is actually pretty much the same. And uh, uh, a more quantitative comparison is made here, where we are looking at the motion of the corners over time, the corners of the structure. Uh, we look at the uh, angle at the elastic folds, and we look also at the height of the center of each one of the strips during deployment, again, over time. And as you can see, by the way, uh, deployment is quite fast. We are talking about a second for the whole thing. And we are also, if we look at uh, the plot on the right, 
uh, we can see that the structure has actually deployed um, uh, in a smaller vertical envelope uh, in the experiment than it did in the simulation. And uh, the reason for this is that our simulation is still not capturing fully the interaction between the motion of the structure and uh, the mechanism, the cylinders that were constraining it partially during deployment. So this is where we are with this research. And uh, the next step in our research is we are building a model that we will put on uh, a rocket and we will do uh, this experiment or this demonstration that you see shown here. We will do it in space and the structure is exactly the one that you've seen in these movies. It's two meter in scale. Uh, there will be additional cameras with which we will record the deployment. And uh, uh, with that, I'd like to conclude my presentation. I have talked about a bending dominated uh, architecture for coilable solar arrays, which is highly scalable. It, and, uh, this structure is made of modules, which form concentric strips, and, uh, uh, and the strips are attached to cords. So this is a structure that is actually easy to build because it's made of modules which can be built separately. Uh, the mechanism that I have shown you is actually a scalable mechanism, so it can be used at any scale and in fact it can be made taller because we expect that at larger scale the strips would be about one meter, uh, one meter wide. Uh, what we have verified through our study is that the, co the, co the coiling process is highly repeatable and it actually works well even under gravity. Uh, as I have demonstrated. And so we think that it will be possible for these structures to achieve uh, the very lightweight targets that I described for future solar arrays. And uh, I would like to thank, uh, again, the sponsors, Northrop Grumman and uh, uh, the Bren Foundation that has uh, funded the Space Solar Power Project at Caltech, my collaborators, Professor Atwater and Hajimiri, and many students that have done their PhDs and already left Cambridge, but also my current collaborators that you see listed here together with the previous students. Thank you.